And the Lord be with you. And also with you. And a very warm welcome to everyone as we gather in the Lord's house for worship today on this day of Pentecost as we celebrate it. Um, just a few announcements as we begin. We have our regular Bible classes this week, so please come out and be a part of those on Monday and Wednesday. Um, we're going to be having, during our service today, we're going to be blessing the prayer shawls and baby caps and everything that the ladies have knit and crocheted. Um, so we thank them for doing that. We're also going to be having the installation of officers today. Uh, but one thing we want to do as we uh, have the installation is to say thank you to a few who are uh, ending their terms of service and not going to be serving any longer uh, for the time being. Um, Mike Johnston, is he in here? What are you down front? You're never down front. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Johnson, who has been president for how long? Most of your life you've been president. Uh, so thank you for your service. Dennis Stillwell, he is serving today. He's in the back. Uh, thank you for your service as elder and head elder. And Harold Miller, he's in the booth. Uh, thank you for your service as elder. Uh, hopefully you'll all be back in serving in various ways over over the years, but uh, at least for the time being, you're going to be stepping out of the offices that you've been in. Is there anyone I'm missing who's ending a term of service? All right, well, we will acknowledge the rest as we uh, have our installation later in the service. Is there any, any other announcements anyone needs to share this morning? All right, if not, Let's go ahead and begin with the blessing of the prayer shawls and chemo caps. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you have directed us to use all things to your glory. We implore you to bless these prayer shawls and chemo caps and baby caps. Honor the prayers that have been offered by those who sewed, knit, and crochet them. Grant that the recipients of these items may have your peace and presence, and also your healing, if it be your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless these prayer shawls, chemo caps, and baby caps, and all those who receive them. Amen. We rise for our opening hymn. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the 
Lord said, Come, let us go down and there confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. In the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful. And give them the fire of your love. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. These all look to you. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful. In peace, let us pray to the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray. O oh God, on this day, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them with the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day, by the same Spirit, to have a right understanding in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Genesis chapter 11. And the whole earth had one language and the same words. And the people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Sodom and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let's make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick of stone and white them for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower which top in the heavens. And let's make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the place of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had made. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. The Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth when he left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it fell the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues, as of fire, appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now they were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus of Asia, Phyla, Familia, Egypt, and parts of Libya, belonging to Cyrene and Pistis and Rome. Both Jews and Israelites, <coughs> Praetians, Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They have filled the new wine. But Peter, staying in the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed him, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be God that has and I will pour my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men dream shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire, and vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood. Before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please rise. I will pour out my flesh, my spirit on all flesh. With the heart one believes and is justified. And we speak the responses to the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced. Because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. We continue with the next hymn.
this Pentecost Sunday, we confess from the Luther's small catechism the third article of the Apostles' Creed and its meaning. What is the third article of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe in God. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning's message is from the account of that very first Pentecost, Christian Pentecost, from Acts chapter 2. I share with you these words. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. As you hear this account of the first Christian Pentecost, Peter and the disciples are there in the temple. People are entering in from all over the place, all different parts of the world. Phil did a pretty good job working his way through the names of those various places this morning. You can only imagine that it's from the ends of the earth as they are as they are coming, the ends of the earth as they knew it in that day anyway, all around the Mediterranean, they're flocking to Jerusalem for the Old Testament festival of Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks, it was sometimes known as, but they would gather, it was a harvest festival, they would gather in the temple to give thanks to God, to bring their offerings. And it was one of the times when people did come from all parts of the world in order to participate in this worship. And they're coming into the temple when all of a sudden there is the sound of a rushing wind. It never says that there actually is a wind that anyone can feel or not, but the, the sound is there. And you know that sound. You've heard it before. The whistling and the rumbling and, and everything that goes with that wind as it, as it comes in. There's power that's there. And you can feel it and know that it's coming. And it says that then there were these tongues as of fire that came down and, and landed on every one of the people who were there. The believers in Christ, the worshipers of Christ the apostles and the other disciples who were there. These tongues as a fire descended on them. We always see in the pictures that it's you know, above their heads. Commentators say maybe it would more rightly be in front of their mouth uh, because it's all got to do with the proclamation of the word that is happening. The power of God's word that is bringing people to faith as the Holy Spirit is working through that. Maybe that's where they landed. It doesn't tell us, but it says it got people's attention because then they begin speaking of Christ. And it says that people of Galilee were speaking in various languages so that everyone, everyone from wherever they were, they were then hearing the proclamation of Christ in their own language. Think about that. Lutheran Heritage Foundation was here. And he talked about the fact that there are 7,000 known languages in the world today. Now, I doubt that there were 7,000 languages represented at, at that time in the temple, 
but however many languages and dialects there were, that's what people were hearing. There was a great miracle that was taking place right there in their sight and in their hearing. They could hear in one language, essentially. Which brings you back to the Old Testament reading for today. The Tower of Babel. The tower that they were building into the heavens. When you read that text, you have to stop and, and think about what was going on. The world has already been created. The fall into sin has already happened. Noah and the ark, the flood has already come and gone. The world has been destroyed and renewed. And sin is upon the world. God gave a command to Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply. They were to fill the earth. That same command was renewed to Noah and his family. Go out and fill the earth. And then you begin to read Genesis chapter 11. Human wisdom, they all spoke one language. They were making these bricks, and they were able to build these fantastic towers. I don't know what it was, Trump Tower, something like that. They were able to build that went up into the heavens, way up into the heavens. The commentators, I mentioned this in Bible class, the commentators were, were, were commenting on that in, God's up in heaven and he's looking down. But it says, God came down to the earth. From the human perspective, it was a magnificent tower. From God's perspective, I can't see it from here. I gotta go down on earth and, and, and get a closer look so I can see this puny little thing that they're building down on earth and, and seeing so and enthralled with. And they come down on earth. And then God announces that he's going to confuse their language. Because what did they want to do? They wanted to build the tower. They wanted to make a name for themselves. Not the praise for God. A name for themselves. And then they wouldn't have to spread out upon the world. What had God told them to do? spread out and fill the earth. And they didn't want to do it. So in the end, what happens? God's judgment comes upon them. He confuses their language and they are now divided and he dispersed them upon the earth. Against their will, they end up filling the earth. But what was going on? Sin was abounding. God had every right to come down and destroy the entire earth at that time. He could have ended everything. But God had made promises about saving the world. About offering a sacrifice and sending a savior. And God was going to keep that promise. And the way that he saw best to keep that promise was to, to disperse the people, to confuse the language, to hold them until the time that he would send the Savior. And Jesus testifies about this in his gospel. He's going to leave, but the Father and Jesus are going to send Comforter, the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, who's going to come and empower that gospel message amongst us. He even tells his disciples, it's, it's better for those who are coming after Jesus than for those who are there in the presence of the Savior himself. And we see this beginning at Pentecost. Power comes upon the people in the temple. The wind 
the fire, the languages. And Peter, who had up to this point been at least somewhat timid, boldly steps forth. And he talks about what the, the prophet Joel had promised. He said there's going to come a time when, when this is going to happen. And he announces that there, this very day, it's happening. <coughs> and that same Holy Spirit continues to work today. As you hear God's word, as it's preached and proclaimed to you, as you share it with one another, the Holy Spirit is right there, and he is at work in that word. Number one, calling us to repentance. Helping us to acknowledge our sin, where we have fallen short of being the people that God would have us to be. To acknowledge that God said, go and fill the earth. And we didn't want to do it. Go and, and obey my commandments. And we couldn't do it. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. And it goes on. And we didn't do it. He calls us to repentance. But then he announces his grace to us. You didn't do it. But I have. And the Holy Spirit leads us to believe the promise. With the assurance that our sin has been paid for. It's been covered over. That he has made us to be his children. You see, in our baptism, that Holy Spirit comes to dwell in our hearts. He continues to, to keep us close to himself. Helping us to repentance. Strengthening our faith. Reminding us that we are children of God. So here we are, sinful human beings. Who don't deserve anything good from God. Kind of like Isaiah, I would almost say. Isaiah, in Isaiah 6, as he receives his call. Woe is me, I'm a, a man of, with sinful lips in a world that is filled with sinful lips. And look at the world around us. The world's a mess. Because sin abounds. People look out for themselves. People come up with their own wisdom that God calls folly. People find, try to find their own way into eternity. When God has said there is one way, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who suffered and died for our sins, and who rose again and sits at the right hand of God the Father, that's what the Holy Spirit is leading us to understand and believe. Well, we could look at ourselves and say, woe is me. We can look at the world and say, what a mess. We can look at our God and say, what a joy. What a joy that we have a risen Lord. What a joy that we have an eternity to look forward to. No matter what we may have to endure and suffer here in this world. And what a joy we have to be able to, to share the good news of Jesus Christ with a world that is dying around us and desperate to hear. Good news is there. Good news is yours. And the Holy Spirit has given that to you. What a joy it is to celebrate Pentecost. Back in Genesis, the languages were confused to preserve us for that day of Pentecost when God would bring the languages back together to preserve us for this day when we could hear the good news of Jesus Christ in our own language and hearing it believe. And what a joy it is to know that hearing that we have assurance for eternity. 
That's God's desire for each and every one of us. That we would be his people here now in this place. And that we would be his forever. In Jesus' name, amen. And at this time, I would invite everyone who's going to be serving as officers, elders, trustees of the congregation to please come forward uh, and we will install you in office. <coughs> I'll let you sit, simply fill the front along here if you would please. Beloved in the Lord, Holy Scripture admonishes us that all things should be done decently and in order. To that end, the Constitution and bylaws of this congregation establishes various offices to which men and women are elected and appointed to serve. In so doing, the church follows the example of the early Christian church as described in Acts chapter 6. The twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, it is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The apostle Peter writes in his first epistle, as each has received a gift, Use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Whoever speaks as the one who speaks oracles of God. Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. In order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You have been chosen to serve as officers, elders, board chairmen, and trustees at St. Paul Lutheran Church. You are to work with the pastor that our life together in Christ may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. You are to see that the services of God's house are held at the proper times, that the word of God is purely preached and taught according to the Lutheran confessions, that the sacraments of Christ are administered according to his institution. That provision is made for the Christian instruction of young and old, that the erring are admonished, and that discipline is maintained. You are to see that the temporal affairs of the congregation are properly administered, and that proper support is provided for the workers of this congregation. You are to assist in caring for the poor and the sick, in cultivating harmony among the members, in promoting the general wealth welfare of the congregation and in furthering the kingdom of Christ here and throughout the world. While holiness of life and obedience to Christ are expected of all members of the congregation, it is especially important that you, as office bearers in his church, show yourselves by word and example to be faithful to him in service and Christian devotion. In the presence of God, and of this congregation, I therefore ask you, do you accept the offices entrusted to you, and do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties, trusting in the Lord, and conforming yourself to his word, in accordance with the faith of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? If so, then answer, I do. Beloved in the Lord, you have heard the promises of faithfulness spoken by these men and women whom you have selected to serve as officers of St. Paul Lutheran Church. Do you promise to support them in their work, to remember them in your prayers, and to work with them to the best of the abilities that God has given you, so that he may be glorified and his work be done in our midst? If so, then answer, we do. Amen.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, I install you in your offices at St. Paul Lutheran Church in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Almighty and most merciful God, enlighten and strengthen you in your offices, that you may be good and faithful stewards to the glory of his name and the good of his people. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you have raised up these servants for work among your people. We humbly implore you to grant them, by your Holy Spirit, those gifts needed for the faithful carrying out of their tasks, most especially wisdom, strength, and willing hearts. Let your blessing rest on this congregation. Strengthen the faith, quicken the love, and enkindle the zeal of its members, that your name may be glorified, and that, there, and that here and in all places under heaven, the kingdom of your Son may be advanced. We remember with thanksgiving those who have faithfully served your people and have now completed their time of service. We pray that in the end of days we, with all your faithful people, may hear the voice of Christ saying, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go in the name of the Lord, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The Almighty and most merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. And I introduce to you our, our trustees, elders, and office holders of the congregation, uh, Suzanne Dorn trustee, and we have Tom Garvin, trustee. How many years have you guys been serving? Forever. Forever, <laughs> Forever and ever. <Yeah>. Amen. <laughs> okay. And Judy Beitzel, who is our stewardship director, chairman of the board of stewardship. Ted Stark, uh, who is serving as an elder. And you've been serving a couple of terms now, haven't you? Your second term, and how many terms? This will be your second as well. So thank you again for your service. Bill Poole, Chairman for the Board of Properties, and you've been on quite a while. Yeah, and I think you've been a while. We, ha we have a, a two-term rule in our Constitution, and then when we haven't, aren't able to fill that, we then fill it with appointments. And I believe you might have been appointed. So thank you for your service. Paige Wright, serving on our fellowship board. You've been appointed as well, if I remember correctly. You and Judy Lowry served together, so thank you for your service. And welcome. Yeah. I always forget a name, and I know your name's right here, Debbie Harris. <laughs> One goes away. I don't know where it goes, but it just disappears. I've only known you for 20 years or more. Uh, give or take. Now you are serving the Board of Education and Youth, so thank you for your service. And Bill Motes, thank you for your service as elder. You're also the choir director and you do a lot of other things around here, but for this day you are an elder, so we thank you for your service. And you've been appointed to a third term, is that correct? And I won't forget your name. <laughs> <laughs> Carol Whiteley, um, serving as financial secretary for a lot of terms. Okay, so thank you. Frank Toth, now you're serving as trustee and as oncoming president. Now, how many years, does, this goes back a while, how many years as president did you serve? Around 20, so you've got a little experience in this. Okay. Well, thank you for coming back and, and helping out again. And Christina Stilwell, thank you for your service as treasurer. And I believe you might have been appointed as well again um, after many uh, terms of service. <laughs> yeah. So, so thank you to all of these folks for their willingness to serve. 
and, and to you all, uh, again, there is a need for some additional elders. Um, and there's also, uh, as time goes on, we have elections for folks to serve in various offices. So I would encourage you to please consider that. Uh, speak to the elders if you're willing to help out. Uh, but we certainly thank these folks for their willingness to serve and to keep our congregation organized and orderly as we continue to live in Christ. So thank you all. You can return to your seats. And we rise to confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. In our prayers this morning, in addition to those who are listed in your worship folder, we want to pray for Reeves and Juris Castle, um, brother and sister-in-law of Paige Wright. Reeves and Juris are, are suffering with COVID. We pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this nation, especially for President Biden and Governor Yeltsin, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for seasonal weather, and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, especially for those who serve in our military and police, for Troy Chapman, Brad DeVore, Brandon Ferry, Andrew Gale, Jeremy Hayes, Jordan Lester, Kyle Luter, Garrett Morris, Meredith Morris, and Mike Sandler. We also pray for those who serve on the front lines as health care workers for Hannah Boding, Ashley Borzik, Tammy Byers, Sarah Craig, Deborah Dominic, Kyle and Brittany Farkas, Amy Hughes, Samantha Miller, and Tia Whitmer. And for all those who travel, let us pray to the Lord. For all those in need, for the hungry and the homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for the sick and dying and for all those who care for them, especially this day, we pray for Reeves and Juris, for Kevin and the Jebsack family, for Steve, for Catherine, for Phil and Carol. We pray for Liz, Diane, Maybell, John and Margaret, for Pat and Tommy, for Paul and Bella, for Faye, for Eleanor and Butch, for Bill, Patrick, Stewart, Gary, Dick, Ed, for Pastor John, for Michael, for Janet, Todd, for Buddy and Cindy, for Cindy and Thelma, Tommy, Robin, Elsie, Mark, Connie, Michelle, April, for Pam, Amy, and Lori, for Lucille, Dick, Paul, Wendy, Billy, Rob, Christy, and Bill. Let us pray to the Lord. We also pray for those who serve in international ministries or as missionaries around the world. We pray that the Lord would keep them safe in the areas that they're at, that he would embolden them to speak that gospel message, that the Holy Spirit would be there and amongst them. We especially pray for Pastor Matt Wood and family, and for Pastor Gustavo Maita 
and men. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord God. And Heavenly Father, we pray for this nation, for those who are, are suffering the many tragedies that we keep hearing about, the shootings, the wars, inflation, and economy. Lord, we pray that you would be here amongst us, that you would settle things and bring peace amongst the people of this land. Keep us safe in your care and help us to be your messengers of, of comfort and grace to the world that needs to hear. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and to the world that is at war, Lord, we pray that you would also be at work. In the Ukraine, we pray that if there be a way that you would restore peace, but especially be there that your gospel message might be heard and that believing they would have salvation in your name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Amen. And at this time, we're going to be receiving our mic offerings. This quarter, the mic offerings are going to support Pastor Gustavo and Ruth Maita as they serve an LCMS mission down in Puerto Rico. So I invite everyone to bring your mic offerings forward if you have them this day. And we pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for having moved us to make these offerings. Lord, it's a, a small token of our appreciation for the gospel that you brought to us, and it's a small token of our hope that the gospel would circle this world, that all would hear of the good news of Jesus Christ, and that all would come to faith. Lord, we thank you for the work that is going on in Puerto Rico. We pray that this would would help to extend that gospel message there, that more and more would hear, and that more and more would believe. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.
give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who ascended above the heavens and sitting at your right hand, poured out on this day the promised Holy Spirit on his chosen disciples. For all this, the whole earth rejoices with exceeding joy. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may this body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true thing from this life and on into the life everlasting. Heart in peace. Serve the Lord.
God's strength to preserve you in the one true faith from this life and on into the life everlasting. Our peace, serve the Lord. Please rise. you have refreshed us through this salutary gift and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another through Jesus Christ your son our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen. let us bless the Lord Thanks be to God. the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.